Welcome to Fear Hustle Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And we are on episode 49, the 49er episode. I was, I, I knew this was coming. Like team of the deck. Now, see, I'm a 49er fan of the 80s and 90s. I mean, I still like the 49ers, but you know, it's not the same old team. Yeah, it's, uh, I grew up liking the 49ers because oh, that did. was my dad's team. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not a huge sports guy. So I don't really follow sports for the most part. See, I used to be a huge sports guy and then I don't know what happened. Like I still watch sports, but it's not, I remember I used to watch sports center probably like 10 or 15 times a day. Nice. Right. Cause it used to be on repeat. Right. And so whenever you needed to do something, you just let it play in the background and you got to work, which probably now I would do that if I was listening, but I don't know. It's just something I'd rather, I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, I love sports. It takes time, right? Like you've got to, you always have to uh, figure out like, am I going to spend time with entertainment, which there's certain amounts that you need in order to stay sane, yeah. or do I want to spend that time uh, reselling and sourcing and listing? Which and you still can do. I mean, I'll watch some basketball games or I'll watch, you know, playoffs and so on while I'm listening. So still doable. Yeah. I yeah, love absolutely. going to Petco Park. So anyways, all right. We're, we're definitely, uh, you know, looking forward to summer here, right? Because we're talking about sports. I'm looking forward to like going to some Padres games. Be a good time. Yeah. But, but. Isn't summer like bad time for eBay? I know. I'm trying to stay positive here. Well, I don't know. No, I don't think it's a bad time. So, you know, it's interesting because, yes, yeah, summer slowdown is is real. Like, and and it's funny because I never realized how real it was until social media. Don't you feel that a little bit? No, because I just started last year. Okay, okay, summer that's slowdown, right. That's so. right. And then last summer, it's crazy that we're talking about last summer already. Right. But when we started the podcast, Mike was on fire with sales, but I think that's still possible. I think so. I think I, I just got to keep buying the weird stuff. Weird <laughs> sells, man. Yeah. But you've got to make a t-shirt that says weird sells. It, it does. sell. it does. So now we are going to have an episode coming up. It's going to be our next episode. We're going to talk about how to beat the summer slowdown, or at least what we think you can do to beat the summer slowdown. And then we're going to get back to our shipping part two yeah, yeah. later on, but we'd rather bring you information that will, you know, help you now instead of like, Hey, it's the middle of July and summer slowdown is about to end. And you're like, thanks. Yep. Wish I had this episode like two months ago. Exactly. So, all right. So how are things going? Good, man. Good. Yeah. What, do you, what do you got going on? So, you know, last we talked about, you were talking about the fifth wheel trailer. I seen some things on Instagram. So what's been, what's the update now? Yeah, no, it's crazy. So we went, we went a couple of weeks ago to like check it out and it was not hundred percent official when we first went because we went on a Sunday. We actually went on mother's day. Um, and we filled out all the paperwork, but the banks were closed. So we had to wait until like they would see whether they'd accept our offer. And, and so we got a call like late the next day that they accepted our offer. And so now it's just a matter of us going back. We got to wait for it to get delivered. Cause those get like made on site and then like, or off site and then, and get, Oh really? In. I did yeah. not know that. I yeah, thought no. you just like walked through. It's like a car dealership. No, it's some, sometimes they are, but like all of the ones that they have on there are typically already sold or a lot of them are already sold. Just waiting okay. for people to come pick them up. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to be going in probably in the next week to finalize all our paperwork. Um, ours is on its way right now. So, um, so or, it's, it's like being shipped. Well, it's, no, it's, joking, it's, it's either being finished, being made, being <laughs> shipped. Like it, it should be here in the next few weeks is what they said. So, wow. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. So we, we we're super excited about it. We, uh, we actually been like purging our house. Like that's what our, that's what our weekend was. I didn't end up going garage selling this weekend cause, um, I'd had a really good week at thrift stores and we really just needed the time to like go through, put together stuff for our own garage sale, clean out some stuff. Like, so we were, we were on like a, a, a purge um, mania, as it were, we, we went crazy, but you know, it, it's weird. It's weird to, to go through so many things and kind of figure out like, I need this or I don't really have space for this. Cause when you live in a fifth wheel space becomes even more of a premium than it already is. Right. Okay. So it, it forces you to, to kind of take, take stock of your life, kind of take stock of what's important to you. What do you value? And, um, I guess for my quote of the week, I'll just throw it out right oh, now. Oh, wow, already. Right, right off the bat. Not we even five minutes in. We got to start strong, man. Okay. Um, this one actually comes from somebody who follows the Instagram that my wife's running for this, um, the trailer and treasures that we're doing for okay. this process. And another reseller follows us and they made a comment that they think it's great that we're doing it. And they said something to the effect of, it's great to see people um, downsizing and buying freedom. And oh, I thought, agreed. I thought that idea, we've been using that ever since we read that, like the buying freedom, like what we did when we made that purchase is we literally bought 
more time together as a family. We bought more time. I mean, I mean, I can't even tell you how many extra hours a week I'm going to have with my son and my wife just by us doing this. Like nice. it's going to be huge. So, and we'll be able to create more content. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I just thought more I'd throw content. that out there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I mean, I guess one of the things just to kind of the encouragement from that quote, I think to everybody is try and figure out ways in your own life you can do that. Like, what is the freedom you want? Like, sometimes it's it's financial freedom. Sometimes it's time freedom. Sometimes it's, I mean, there's different freedoms that people want, but mm-hmm. find a way um, to get that freedom, to buy that freedom, whether it's through extra work, whether it's through changing your lifestyle. But, um, you know, it's 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 great. It's like a good feeling. For sure. So my question to you is, so you're downsizing, you have all this inventory. So are you still going to be doing the, you had mentioned something about building like a shed or something. Yeah. Connected. Are you yep. still going down that road? Yep. Nice. Okay. So you'll be able to buy more. Hopefully. Yeah. That, that would be. And then maybe do some big items for like local. Oh yeah. Well, we're, where we're going to be moving is kind of out in the boondock. So okay. uh, we can't be, we can't do too many local sales unless I'm willing to like meet people at Starbucks and stuff, which is probably a better idea anyways. Okay. Okay. No, it's awesome. And so it is, it is definitely, I will tell you, it's going to be a life change, but I don't know. I'm just excited because you obviously, it's going to allow you and your wife to build the business even more, yep. Yep. right? Which that's kind of been your thing lately is like the lost time. And so now you have a little more time to go sourcing, but it seems you did okay sourcing this past week. Yeah. I mean, not, not at garage sales, but I watched your Instagram. It didn't look like you did super great. At- I did all right. I was uh-huh. happy with it. I always feel better when I, when you go out and I don't and I hear that it was terrible. <laughs> it terrible it like just makes me feel like okay, I didn't miss anything. Well, the only reason it was good it was like I literally picked up maybe twelve items, but those items are going to make me more than five hundred dollars. Nice. So I say it's good because less is more. Right. 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 I rather say that than go, hey, Mike, I picked up thirty items to make five hundred because that's thirty items I have to list. Yep. It's, um, sometimes I feel like that's where I'm at. Like I'm finding a lot of items where it's like I'll make the five ten dollar profit on ten to fifteen dollar profit. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be a, a sweatshop, but you got to get that pipeline going no, and I know, built I before know. you can kind of be picky about your items. But that's the hardest thing is that I, you know, I'm being, and we'll talk about this in a summer slowdown episode, but you, I think now you have to be even more selective about what you list. Mm. And there's some other things we'll talk about later on here in, in our, uh, I guess our reseller topics or reseller news, whatever we, we should have a special name for that segment. What do, what do we have? What do we call it right now? Current topics. I current think that topics, still works. Reseller news. Re- current topics. All right. Pure until, hustle. Until somebody comes up with something better. Pure hustle something. That's what we need to do. And we still need sound effects. You know that? I, I like, I believe that our listeners are very imaginative people <laughs> and know. the sound effects are in their head. I, mean, no, I, I could li- do it. I could add like a soundboard, I, but it'd I be like, like really cheesy. No, I don't know if I, I, I could hold my, like c- contain myself. I'd be pushing You. Like the, I'd be reaching over and like the... Muck, 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 muck. Like I'd just be pushing all of the buttons the, the whole time. One. Yeah. Why the chicken one? I don't know. Is. I feel like every soundboard has got to have like a chicken one. <laughs> there you go. But uh, okay, well, that's good. I mean, I, you know, it, it's interesting because you're you're picking a perfect time. I mean, you know, summer slowdown will work to your advantage unless you don't have a slowdown, right? Because so you'll be able to move and be able to source and be able to list. So that's exciting. Yeah, no, it's good. What about you? Anything new going on? Uh, yeah. Well, here's the thing. So I'm in this really kind of weird phase because I'm going to be ending my first year as a full-time reseller, right? So pretty much everything that I've experienced for the last year was all brand new, right? So now, you know, starting in June, I'm going to be in this kind of like, okay, I know what to expect. And so I got to do th- do things better. And so uh, right now, I am definitely listing like there's no tomorrow. Uh, some days I'm listing better than others. Uh, and the problem has been is that my helper went back to school for a little bit, but she's going to be off in a week. And so I'm going to be able to get that cranking. And so what I'm planning on doing is all the stuff that I've been hoarding, I'm going to start listing. So I have a... What's your deadline? I need a hard deadline so that I can... I would say in the June, everything should be listed. In the sense, I have like a Lionel train set that's worth several hundred dollars. I have telephone signs that are worth several hundred dollars. And I, I mean, like a piece on some of these. I have vintage toys. I have, I mean, I have all kinds of craziness that I'm like, I like to keep this. But now I'm thinking about, okay, if I'm full time, like, how am I going to be the summer slowdown? Right. And so I know one thing that sells year round are, you know, collectibles and, you know, uh, 
hard goods that people need, like and supply. So I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna test it out a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna let my helper still do the clothing and do the shoes, and I might have another helper I'm bringing on too. And so that's gonna definitely double that. And Amazon, I got a few things happening, so I'll talk about that too. And uh, I don't know, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because now I'm at a phase where I'm not looking to just make it. Now I'm looking to like scale it. Uh, in the sense that, you know, uh, billionaire next, billionaire next door, the millionaire next door. One of the things they talk about is that you should be able to go a certain amount of time without being employed. Mm. Right. So I just want to make that longer and longer and longer. I mean, I don't know. The, the math is crazy. I think it like at our age, based on what we're making, well, I don't know what we're both making, but well, I know what I'm making, but <sighs> if we, if we like calculate it, it should be something like we should be able to go five to 10 years without working. How crazy is that? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, it seems so unattainable, but it also like going back to what I said with like buying freedom, like that would give you a feeling of, of intense freedom. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, the security you feel, we talk about security, like paycheck to paycheck. Imagine security. That's like a year or two out. Yeah. No, that's crazy. That's good. All right. So you got any crazy random story, not crazy, but any stories you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, I mean, not, not like, uh, like super random or crazy, but, uh, a couple of days ago last week I had like an early release, like a minimum day type day. Okay. And so I left work, um, early as it were. And instead of going and picking up my son, cause my, my wife and my son were both at Disneyland. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make you. Use- no. Cause I, I at work, you know, okay. I gotta get, gotta, right. you gotta, you gotta put that work in. So, um, I decided I'm going to make use this time and I'm just going to hit up thrift stores on my way home and I went to seven of them nice seven thrift stores which was it worth it it was it was that I, I, even though we're done with thrift stores forever done with thrift stores forever um it was it was worth it I, I filled up pretty much filled up my entire forerunner I have a big 99 forerunner so there's like a lot of space in the in the trunk okay. lay down seats and pretty much filled the entire thing up so uh, I actually had to go to Costco and buy like three more bins to hold stuff so oh really uh, yeah nice. so I, I think we did really really good um one thing that I think is I mean kind of random is I just mentioned like those hiking backpacks oh yeah and I That's sold good. one locally and found another one of the exact same model that I've already sold two of in the last few months at a thrift store so I picked that up. It's like so easy to just be able to pick it up. And then the random part is somebody reached out on Let Go about the other one that I just sold because I hadn't taken it down Let Go yet. Oh, really? Because it was on Craigslist that it sold on. And they're like, is it still available? So I was like, yep, because it's nice. the exact same model, right? Like, I mean, maybe I'll have to look through the pictures to see if there's any differences, but like it's it's the same model. So like I didn't even have to like re repost it. And on. it's local. So like yeah. if they show up and they, they don't, don't like it, it yeah. you're good. They don't it's have not, to buy it. Yeah. It's yeah. not it's not like I'm shipping them something and it's like, wait a minute, this is not the you know. I passed on one of those backpacks the other day at the garage sales. I should have picked it up, but I kinda didn't want to deal with it. It's so, so easy local. Like I can, I've sold them before. I, too. I tend to pick them up for like fit, fit five to like fifteen dollars. And they end up selling for like 75 to a hundred local, like no questions asked. People just come like both times, like no haggle. They're just like, here's your money. Thanks. Bye. I should have picked it up. I yep. should have picked it up. Okay. Well, good. Now when you, when you went sourcing, so you went sourcing like middle of the day, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, which is very different for okay, me. Okay. So that's what I was going to ask you. Is it like a different vibe? Yeah, like, it was. It was different in the sense that, um, typically when I go sourcing garage sale or not garage sales, thrift stores, it's early, early morning. Okay. So last summer I did quite a few thrift stores and I'd go with my son. So he'd wake up and my goal was to get as many thrift stores done as I could before it was his nap time. Cause okay. I'd have to get home. He would take a nap. And by the time he woke up from his nap and I did like feeding him and all that stuff, um, my wife was getting home soon. And so I didn't really have any time to thrift store, like go to the thrifting during the day. And then, or I go late at night, right before closing. Right. I feel like everything's been picked through. Yeah. This was a good time. Like I feel, I feel that there was probably some stuff that I missed from the morning. Um, the stores were a little bit busier than they are like first thing in the morning, but there was also a lot of inventory being restocked. Like, yeah, you can't like, out bins. I find some stores like around 11 or 12 is a good time. Cause that's when stuff comes out. That's when they're pushing out bins. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. So I, there, I, I would say probably, I probably got like 10 items straight out of, bins like as they're pushing them out and they like leave them there and i'm like oh this is a good one nice so yeah like i found like this blowtorch handle thing um in the box three dollars is what goodwill wanted for it yeah 
I'm going to say their name, even though it's like $3. And uh, you they know, sell funny. for like 65. So, so it's like said, pretty good, you know? Eat, wait, before we go, how much is it selling for? It's like 65. Nice. Yeah, I mean, not bad. So I wanted to go back to like the name. So I think we should refer to it as the name that is not spoken from now on. The store on. that shall not be named. But I almost feel like Target was that over Q4. Yeah, but but Target, but see, Target was, I think it was just a lot of talk. Sh- should we just call it Badwill? No, this, no I, I, I like the store that shall not be named. That's what Goodwill will be from now on. All right, because no, maybe your stores are better where you're at, but here Goodwills are out of control. They're oh, the worst by uh, far. It, if you're not following us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram because I try. I still go, you know, once or twice a week, and sometimes I'll score, you know. And there's some stores that you know they have really awesome prices. It, I think it's like one, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that and also. Just remembering that every store has the weakness or yeah, true, true. or there's different weaknesses. Like sometimes you, you're looking through pants and it's like, oh, here's a pair of Miss Me's they want $35 for. And then you go one over and it's like, oh, here's a pair of Miss Me's they want $3 for. You oh, know? So I it's have like, not had that experience. So it's like sometimes like I think whoever's pricing even like that guy goes home and then the next guy comes in and he's like, oh, no. And then like. Yeah, it could be. So. It could be. Well, the store that shall not be named. Uh, it, it's definitely. I think it's getting worse. I just uh, I went and I don't want to talk about this too much, but. Pair of Doc Martens. They weren't even vintage. Yes. No, I saw those on Instagram. Yes. Well, I, I don't know if you posted. No, I took a picture. Let me. You keep talking okay, about so it. Okay, so here's what picture. happened. So Mike went to. Oh, you know what? Are you going to share about that in this podcast? The grand store reopening? What are you think, planning I, on well, it? Well, I went I the day after. Went. I didn't go. To the oh, you didn't go? Opening. Like, no. okay. So no, it was the day after. One thing we always talk about is going on the days that stores open, right? As far as like the grand reopening. So the store that shall not be named What's yeah, those exact. I saw them too. I, I took did you pick them up? No. Nope. Oh, okay. He has the same picture. So, <laughs> anyways, I don't know if people can see it, but anyway, so they were a pair of Doc Martens. They were worn. They were not vintage, and they were listed for forty nine ninety nine. Yep. But they put boutique on the tag, so you know you can pay forty nine ninety nine when it's boutique. Oh my goodness! I, I just looked at that. I'm like, this is outrageous. I mean, it doesn't be. The Birkenstocks that I found that were used for seventy nine ninety nine, those they were <laughs> that was the most outrageous thing. Anyways, I got so excited when I saw those too. I'm like, yeah, find me some Doc Martens, and I looked at them I'm like forty nine, forty nine. Yeah, because they're sitting there no. like perfectly, right? It's just like you can't miss it. And here's here's what's interesting. So when I went to the store that shall not be named, when, when I walked in there, I'm doing my IG story, and I'm like, hey, yeah, you know, I like going to the store openings because they pump the stores full of good stuff. Uh huh. And the security guard goes, yeah, you missed out. There's a lot of good stuff here, right? So the couple of things I noticed out of that. Number one, have you noticed all the goodwills of security now? Yeah. What's like, up with that? The, the one I like to go into, I'm going to go to tonight and I'll figure out. I don't think they will, but I see they all have security now. Yeah. So either there's a theft problem or maybe they're bringing in more high-end stuff or maybe they think their stuff is worth more. <laughs> they they, they now think that they're like a, a high-end store with their boutique prices boutique. and now they need to have security at the front, you know? Cause like when you go to the like really fancy malls and there's like the jewelry stores and there's like an armed guard outside, like, you know, they're high end. So like, I think like Goodwill recognizes Wait, that story that of, shall not be named. The store that shall not be named recognizes that, you know, like they got that kind of jewelry and, and fancy stuff. So why not? Interesting. So I, I used to be a security guard. So did you? No, so no, no, I'm, no. I'm not, I'm not but against that's what that. I'm saying. I think it's interesting what you're saying because yeah, like you get this, I don't know. It's interesting. The reason I am intrigued by it is because somebody had told me that in Wisconsin, in one of their stores, they, they have like loss prevention there, hmm. which I was kind of blown away. I'm like loss prevention. Like I, I get it. Like there's the people will shoplift at a thrift store. Right. Cause if there's high end things, like I, I can't see why they wouldn't shoplift, but I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of surprising to me. That's all I'm going to say. So, all right. The story, here's the thing. And the other thing about the story that shall not be named is that that day there were, it was not pump full of goods. It might've just been that one day, but here's the thing. If you go to the one of those, you have to be ready. Like you can't play games. Like you have to go out there and just get what you can get and then research after the fact, because it does draw a lot of people. Yeah. I, I mean, I went the day after or a couple days after. I'm not sure. Um, so I, I didn't even know it was reopening. I feel like I feel like I, I missed out on that. Well, I think all they did is they moved the registers. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Everything else looked the same. But I picked up a ton, like probably like four or five 
fitness watches or like like so different old Garmin running watches okay. or like Fitbit stuff, and all of them were priced really well. So I and I was like, what is going on with this place? That maybe maybe this was like their weakness. I just bet it was just overflow they had from restocking their pumping up their store and people didn't think about those. So I just found stuff that other people missed. Mike played the knowledge game and he won. Yeah. That's what happened. You gotta know, man. <laughs> it goes. I already I see I sold my personal like old Garmin running watch, which is why I knew to like I didn't even notice you had one of those. I thought yeah, I always Garmin. thought that was like an, an iPhone watch. No, I um an iWatch. I, I did um I'm not no. No, I know he's an Android guy. Yeah, I'm not. I Apple won't. Fan. So, he, anyways, this is super random, but I will tell you if you have an iWatch and it definitely has leveled up your life, let us know because I always take surveys of people that have them. Five out of six people tell me they have them because somebody bought it for them. And then when I ask them, would you get one of these? They always say, no, I would never buy one of these for myself. The best answer I got was this, this uh, one of the servers at, 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 a, at a Chili's. And I asked her, I said, hey, so. You know, do you like your iPhone watch? She goes, yeah, I love it. It helps me cheat on all my tests. I'm like, awesome. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, of all the ways, uh, you know. Well, it, I, I, that's something I have to pay attention to now as a, as a teacher. You know, you tell students, all right, put your cell phones over here, put them away. I got the watch on. You don't even notice a lot of times. Yeah. You, know, you just have to be thinking. You got to be thinking. You but, you know. know, do you remember the craziest story? So, <laughs> I know a teacher is going to share this. The, the craziest stories is that when students have the dummy phones. Like when yep. they have to turn in and they turn in a fake a phone. fake, yeah. The best one I had was a student had a phone and they were texting answers to another student. And then the teacher caught that phone. And as the teacher caught it, took a screenshot of what the student was doing. And by the time the, st- the teacher got to the desk with the phone, this phone was wiped clean remotely. That was crazy. That's where technology is. Unbelievable. Being real and relevant. Yep. Here's a podcast. Yep, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, anyways. Let's Remember, get back. we used to just pass notes, man. Like... They, I know. And then when you got caught, I mean, it was pretty obvious. Yeah, they, they, they'd pull it out and the teacher would read it. I went and took a, a cell phone from a student the other day. And like, as I'm taking it, he's like desperately trying to lock it before I can pull it out of his hands. Once it's locked, it's like, I mean, I wouldn't go through a student's phone anyways, but it's like any text messages or anything going on, like I no longer can access it. Like yeah, it's done. I know. I, know. <sighs> I don't miss those days. <sighs> that I don't miss. All right. So you hit thrift stores. So yeah, I, will, you? I will reveal my... Undisclosed location. Ooh, another store that was not named, but now can be named. This can't. Yes, there you go. So, Office Depot. I know most of you know it was clothing. So now that now that they're closed, uh, I, I feel okay sharing it. And I've sold pretty much most of the stuff. And I'm, I won't get into specifics of the items I picked up, but I will say this: whenever you're doing any kind of hey, there's a store closeout. There's a few things that people need to consider. One is you can't wait to the end. Because at the end, there's nothing but garbage. Two, you're dealing, you know, depending what level of a reseller you are, like you're you're in competition not only with resellers that just go in and do RA. You're talking about the big timers. And some of you that listen are, are you know, I've, I met some of you at eBay upfront where you go in and you will make a deal with the liquidator before and whatever is left, you'll buy out everything. Wow. Right. That's have you heard of that like before? Sight unseen. They just yeah. So, uh, so example. I was waiting for like ink. Like ink. Ink's a good seller, and I was waiting, and eventually it got down to fifty percent. So here's the issue with Office Depot. They were so expensive to begin with that even with like seventy percent, like some things weren't worth buying. And so you got to be careful. Like do your research because had I gone in there and go oh seventy percent off. Like I would have lost money. I seriously had to wait until things got to about, I want to say 80 to 90% off. I can't believe they're closing. No, no. It was only three stores. It was only three stores. They're not I clo- can't believe they oh. can stay open. Oh, I oh, don't know. No. That's the thing. I still, I'm still in shock. So I'll give you an example. Like certain media was marked up so high that like even at 70% off, I was still getting a better deal on Amazon at 70% off. So some of the stuff I was able to get, they had like a, you know, if you buy 20 more items, you can get 20% extra on top of the already discount. So I bought a lot of stuff, but it, it was one of those. It wasn't like Toys R Us. Like Toys R Us, you know, Toys R Us was higher priced too. Yeah. But this was a lot more higher priced. And uh, it was like the discount clearance price was <laughs> Amazon prices. So there was no money to be made. But 
it was nice. So a couple, another thing I learned is even if it's an hour or two away, it's better to get a hotel nearby and sleep and get up early and get there right when it opens. Uh, well, if you're undisciplined like me, maybe Mike who gets up at four 30 would make the drive, but, yeah. but, but here's the deal. There's traffic that you may not be able to be aware of. Like, you know, what well, the places I was going was over in LA, over by LA. I got a hotel that was in between both stores that were shutting down. So I spent one day, I spent like three hours in one store. I spent three hours in the other store. I was going to, I did some packing in the hotel room, but I didn't do a lot. I ended up taking it all back with me and packing back at home. But what I learned in that is that it was so worth, you know, I paid $80, $90, I think for a night. I got a King executive suite. I, I felt oh, like man. I felt like it, it was pointless because I planned on Were doing there like <laughs> flowers in the room when you walked in and like, no, this was like a best Western hotel. It wasn't like, I don't love best Western. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like the Fairmont or anything from San Francisco. Yeah. But like one, one, once, once you're at executive status, no. I feel like, you know, <laughs> Any, anything a little can bit be more. executive. Anyways, it felt nice, but here's the thing. I dropped 80, $90. I stayed the night before got up and within two or three items that I picked up, I already made that money back and it paid for my hotel. And then two or three more items, it paid for my gasoline and it paid for my food. So definitely was worth doing that. And I did that for three straight weeks and I sold a lot of the inventory. And here's the other thing you got to recognize. If you're going to do retail arbitrage or store liquidation, or even with eBay is that right away, people are going to sell things and they're going to sell it fast. And so there is a race to the bottom on items. So you, now is that a time when it'd be worthwhile to hold off, let all those people dump their inventory. And then once the, the, the flood of clearance items, items are like gone. Now prices will level out. Things will get back to normal. Now you sell. It depends on what it is. So I had one item that when I picked it up, I picked it up for $10 a piece. And I was flipping on on Amazon for about fifty nine ninety nine, like like quick. Mm. And then I saw everybody jump on that listing. So now it's at about forty bucks. So there's still ten to fifteen dollars to be made on each item. But that was one of those I needed. I needed to throw it out there and sell it fast because right now it's flooded. So I don't know when it's going to rebound. Mm. You know what I mean? So luckily I don't have that much inventory on eBay. Here's what happens on eBay is that people will find items and since they got it for so cheap, they want to sell it fast. So they'll sell it for cheap. So on, on eBay, I would say hold because eventually people are going to want those items. But it was interesting with office Depot because something that I found at one store, like that item I talked about, I didn't find at any other stores. So I purposely bought every single one of those. So I wouldn't hopefully have no competition, you know, unless somebody in another part of the country, because I know like, uh, I think like resale rabbit hit up a uh, office depot in Wisconsin at the same time. Mm -hmm. And resale rabbits, a, he's a big reseller too. So anyways, it was nice because I was able to, you know, triple my money within two weeks. Nice. But now I have a bunch of stuff that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. Like, am I going to go to eBay? So you I'm should gonna, sell it. No, I know I need to sell it. I just don't know. Make some money. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out at what point in time, because right now the market is flooded on a lot of those items. So, but it, it was, it was good. Just I, what I'll tell you is always be ready, you know, cause you can, there's ways to find out when stores close. And when you find out, like you got to move on it because the more people find out the less chances you're going to be able to sell things at top dollar and be careful about prices. Be careful. If stores are closing, there's a reason why they're closing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're probably overpriced. hundred percent. Some of the stuff was just obnoxious. <laughs> And, and they, ha oh, here's the other thing. Look out for things that are not related to that store. Because what happens is that liquidators, they have other inventory. It's called augmented. I think in, I told you they called it augmented, but they'll shove into those stores items that they weren't able to sell before. And you might be able to find some good stuff. So keep an eye for that too. Huh. So, so it was good. It was definitely worth my time. And uh, I have a, I have a, a few more trips like that. Yeah. I'm excited to do something like that sometime. Oh, it'll be good. Yeah, store closing. I've never done. You get to buy anything, like I want to buy that vending machine. Hey, eventually I, I you would, do. I'd like to buy that great, cash you know register. What? That's a great question. So I bought a ton of shipping supplies for good money. So I bought like 400 feet rolls of bubble wrap. Was it like the office supplies that they had that you were able to buy? Uh, no, it was shipping supplies that they had. Nice. 
Uh, and I was able to buy like, I think about four, 400 foot rolls at about, I think 15 to 20 bucks each. Nice. So it wasn't like incredible, but it was still a win. And then I was able to buy some stuff like tape dispensers and like other items that they had in the back of the store. So yeah, you get to a place I always want to find. Remember I talked about this, I think two podcasts ago, like Toys R Us. I wish I bought the pillow makers. I still, and I asked this time around and the office depot doesn't do a lot of shipping. So they didn't have any. So, so there you go. Yeah. That'd be cool to get some like industrial strength, uh, Air pillow machines. That would oh, be it, that would be amazing. Cause I mean, you can get them for inexpensive on Amazon, but they like look super chinzy and have very bad reviews. Oh, I, I haven't even tried. I know. I think uh, I know a couple of people that use them, and they're not too bad. So, but it's like what is it, five hundred dollars or something to that effect? Yeah, and I think there's different models, but like even even that, like when you see it, and it's got like eight people reviewing it, and it's got three stars. It's like. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I Probably <laughs> shouldn't buy this item. Air pillow would be a life changer. All right, so some current topics here. Let's hear it. But before choo, we jump choo, into choo, current choo, topics, choo, choo, know, before, choo. We, before we go, hey, if you haven't had a chance, follow us on Instagram. Uh, we are Pure Podcast. We're always dropping knowledge every day. Uh, we're also interacting, you know, and Instagram, I will tell you, there's so much good content out there from other resellers. It's If you're not on Instagram, you're just listening to the podcast or watching our YouTube, definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, also, Pure Soul Podcast on Facebook, Pure Soul Cast on Twitter. And uh, if you're listening to the podcast and you have not, you know, watched us on YouTube, jump on over, hit that subscribe button, you know, do the thumbs up and uh, leave us some comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And, you know, you can always email us at purosopodcast at gmail.com. And you could also contact us by phone, 619-738-1170. I'm missing those phone calls. We haven't had a lot of phone calls. Yeah, not not tons. So give us a call. Give us a We'd call. We'd like to hear you. Share your hustle of the week on the phone call. Yeah, because... Who wants to hear Mike and Orlando talk the entire time? And like, sometimes we don't get, you the, know, we don't get the story right. Yeah. Like I only, we're, I'm trying to like secondhand tell the story. Like no one can tell the story better than you can tell the story. Agreed. It's your story. And if you have a username, you know, sometimes we end up butchering. Yeah, it's, ter- it's terrible. Like I can't even pronounce my students' names. It's like the end of the school year. And I'm like, how do I say this person's name? I'm, I'm, Instagram handles, it's even worse. So you tell us your Instagram handle when you call in. That would be that'd be awesome. That would help. And so I gotta remember. So when we so I messed up I, I want to share this right now. I butchered somebody's name on the last podcast. So I want to make sure I get this right because I told them I would correct it. So their name is Can Have Nice Things Vintage. That's their handle. I don't know what I pronounced. It was kind of like can they vine make things vintage? I don't know what I said. I said something terrible. There you go. And they they appreciated the shout out. They said thank you so much. But it's can't have nice things vintage because I can't have nice things. Mm. So if you're listening to the podcast, here's a correction. I apologize for butchering your handle. Yeah, name. sometimes Instagram handle names are like when you go up on a license plate where yes, they've got like a exactly custom license plate, about. you're like yeah. trying to like wait, is that how do, how do you? I've I've seen some where it's like nobody will ever get what that is. Like I don't know what it is. There's it's nothing, but they're paying extra every single year when they register their car to have that. So I'm like, it means something to them. So I, again, my apologies. I correct. Sorry you. about that. Can't have nice things. Can't have nice things. See with Orlando around. Can never have nice things. Yeah. Uh, again, my MA only did so much for me. I still. I mean, <laughs> that's what's crazy. I had to decipher old Spanish language, but I couldn't read basic. English. Oh, hey, well, once you throw happens. a bunch of words together, man, it's there tough. you go. It, it all gets cloudy. So, all right. And uh, hey, if you haven't had a chance, you know, reviews, thank you so much for the reviews on iTunes. Awesome. You know, writing reviews, sharing, hitting that share button, sharing with others on YouTube and Instagram, on YouTube, on YouTube and Anchor or Spotify or whatever platform always helps. And last of all, we have our link down low if you ever want to say thank you in a monetary way. Uh, feel free to. Uh, thank you so much for all of you that have, you know, given. And and we are just very appreciative for that. So thank you. All right. Sir, sir. Do you have a, do you have an offer or something? I saw you on your phone. No, I was, uh, I just sold two things. So I was just checking what they nice. were. Yeah. Can, can you share one of them? I want to, I want to hear. Oh, you got a nice sale in there. I got two. Okay. So 
So, so this just had just in reselling topics. Pew, 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 pew. Mike has sold uh, two items. So, so one of them was a hooked on phonics. Oh, those uh, are good. Yeah, I, I picked this up at a garage sale. I picked up two of them. One of them was open, and the guy told me neither of them were. So I was a little bummed out. Uh, but I paid thirty for two. I just sold one for eighty. Nice plus shipping. Um, bolo and, and Bolo, yeah. Pick up some hooked. It was from Costco. It still had like the sticker. You could tell like the Costco sticker pricing on okay, the top. Okay. Um, and then the other thing. I don't know if you remember from several episodes ago, I told you I've got that old, old school game, uh, Wiz Wars, what it's called. I got two of them okay. and both of them were slightly incomplete and I was able to take the two together oh, yeah, and make together. one complete yeah. set. I uh, just sold that for seventy one ninety nine plus shipping. Yeah, yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, it feels good, man. See, you know, you talked about all those episodes where something would sell during the episode. See, now I have nothing. I have nothing to show. But look at you. That's nice. Yeah. You made a Benjamin and a half in the last five minutes. Just just, just sitting here. You know, know what I mean? Somebody said somebody said on Instagram that our podcast triggers the algorithm. Our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome, wouldn't it? All right. Let's get to our reselling topic. So, hey, eBay up front. So, thank you to all of you that came up and said hi. And, you know, it was such an awesome opportunity. I do feel a little bad, though, because I told Mike about it. I didn't think it was going to be as awesome as it was. And so Mike had school the next day. So that's why Mike didn't go because, you know, traffic gets crazy. And uh, I already apologized to Mike. Like, it's messed up, man. I would have had a lot of fun. <laughs> it would have been a good time. <laughs> was, you didn't even invite me. I, well, no, I did. But it was like, Mike, if you can make it, it it's probably not that big of a deal. You're like, like I'm going to this thing. It's probably not important for you to go. Okay. It must not be a big deal. I, that, and then he leaves. He's I, like, this is the was, greatest event ever. Well, it wasn't the greatest event ever, but it was definitely great. Uh, so I just wanted to share that because eBay. Oh, so did I say eBay open or eBay upfront? It's eBay upfront. We yeah, upfront. So eBay upfront is these smaller like get together that eBay is hosting in different cities. So if there is one near your city, I strongly recommend you go. Uh, we're not hired by eBay. We're not sponsored by eBay, but eBay, we're here for you. But it it was it was all free. They paid for parking. They had some awesome desserts, which I didn't eat any of it. I was too busy schmoozing. But it was some good stuff. So there was that, and then there was they gave they gave me a swag bag. So I got like more shipping tape, more envelopes, more boxes, and then they gave me like a stack of a hundred thank you cards. Nice, which you'll never use. I I because you don't believe in them. I, I don't believe in thank you cards. <coughs> Maybe I should flip them on eBay. Um. Yeah, so remember we went to that Poshmark event? Oh, yeah. Posh party? Yeah. Uh, we were there with Sell Quick, Ship Quick, and as we were leaving, they had picked up each one of them, picked up a, uh, a license plate cover. It was okay. like, you're a Posh boss or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. And we're like, oh, do you guys want those? Because like, we're like, don't like stuff like oh, that. Oh, that's on right. Cars. That's right. And they're like, that. no, we're going to sell it on eBay. And we're like, genius. So we went and we picked up two. And we sold both of them. And we just had somebody reach out to us on Poshmark and say, do you have any more of these? Oh man, you should have just man, right? Use an old word. For, nah, I was gonna use an old word for my growing up. You should have ganked them. An old word. Is it? That's when I was a kid. That's what we used. Is that ghetto? I mean, I don't, I don't know what terminology I would use to describe that word. That was from my upbringing. But anyways, because they were free, they were just sitting there. Well, they were like it was one per person. Oh, okay. So, okay. so that's different. You got to be legit. Yeah. It's one per person. Yeah. But, but you should have picked one up. But here's didn't. what's sad. So eBay at eBay up front. The bags were just sitting there. So I saw people grabbing two or three bags. Now, I grabbed one. I had to be legit. I had to be real. But, uh, you know, hey. Anyways, it, it, was, it was nice swag. So, all right. So this is eBay. Here's what I'll tell you about eBay from this event. Number one, definitely believe that eBay was for the seller. And uh, granted, obviously, the event was set up to make you feel like that. But 100% from beginning to end, Completely had no questions that eBay was invested in in sellers, and because you know they they started off with right away with you know you you go in there and they had you know they had drinks and they had the free food whatever but then they had all these people with eBay gear walking around and just nicest people like they did a good job hiring people because the people that I met were just second to none just really outgoing and, and just you know you could talk to them. And they're willing to answer your questions. And if they couldn't, they'd give you their business card and say, hey, shoot us an email. We'll get you that answer. 
Second uh, was they had, they started off with, uh, they had a little like, this is the eBay direction. And it was great. I mean, they had talked about like managed payments that they want to be done like by the fall with setting up. So I'm hoping that, you know, eBay Global Shipping is part of that. Right. Because this is part of our other topic, you know, the PayPal thing. It's, it's, I don't know what's happening. You know what I'm talking about? The PayPal thing? Uh, with the, the refunds, you still have to pay the fee or something. Like yeah. That, like right? they'll keep yeah. the fee. Like if it's a refund, even though it's your money, they're going to keep that fee. So if you have no idea what we're talking about, we talked about this a few podcasts ago. PayPal supposedly on May 7th instituted a policy that said when you sell something, if you have to cancel or refund it, you know, we will basically keep our fees and not refund them back to you. That's crazy. That's just, to me, I, I don't know. I have, I have strong words about that, but I won't use it. But it's not right. It's, I feel such injustice for that. So I say all that. <laughs> don't you feel unjust? Like, then what? You have a $1,000 sale. A thousand, and they keep, what, the 2.9%, right? So what is that? It's like $29. That they're gonna keep. If you do the refund. If we do the refund. Or somebody just randomly buys something and they're like, eh, I don't want it. Can you cancel this transaction? They're gonna keep the refund. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean that that stinks, but I just look at it as like the service they're providing is the transferring of money. And so when when the money is already transferred once and then now it's transferring back, like they're almost you're almost getting two transactions no. for the price of one. Okay, but they used to charge 30 cents when that happened. Why don't they just charge the 30 cents? Here's the thing with PayPal. You know, in Europe, you could transfer money on the spot. PayPal, you have to wait three days or you can, I think it's like 1% fee to transfer your money on the spot. So in America? Uh Uh-huh. So PayPal, you bet, or PayPal in Europe is different than PayPal. Correct. Okay. From what I know from resellers. So if I'm wrong, let me know if I'm wrong. But transferring of money is a lot easier in Europe than it is here. I'm sure it has to do with some kind of laws they have in place versus legislation that we have in place. Could be. Because if they can make the money off of it, they would. Right? There's got to be some kind of law that's been passed that say maybe you can't operate your business in that way. You could be right. I could be. I could be wrong. I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything. I I see all that because I am excited that eBay is actually moving forward and they, you know, they addressed every question. Here's what happened. They actually had a QA. and a so uh, shout out to uh, Feel Good Finds, Mary Saragossa, for being willing to be in front of the crowd with another eBay rep. And they did an open Q&A. And uh, some of the questions were good. Some of them were posturing, like, you know, like, here's a question, but we want to point out something bad that we don't like that you do. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I my question was a tough one, and they engaged it. So I threw out the question I had a few podcasts ago that was, you know, now that we do all good till canceled, if you do promoted listings for all your listings, can those listings go stale? You remember that question? I yeah, talked about I that. Do. So they didn't have the answer right away. It was like, oh, you stumped it, right? But their eBay reps came to me and said, they gave me an answer, but it wasn't like an answer because I think with AI, I'm not sure. This is kind of scary. I'm not sure if there's a complete answer when you deal with AI. It's whatever the AI does. Yeah. I, well, and it's probably like, whatever answer they give you now may or may not hold over the next few months as this thing is settling, right? Like yeah. it's going to, it's going to change. Policies will change. And but so. they were transparent with me about that. That's what I appreciated. So they, they basically told me that yes, it prevents it from going stale, but it all depends on how many of those items are listed on eBay. You know what I'm saying? So if there's like thousands upon thousands, yes, promoted listings keeps it up in the search, <coughs> but if there's so many items, there's no guarantee of how high in the search it'll be. But if there's like, you know, a few hundred and you pay for promoted listings, and even though it's like an item they've had listed for four or five years, it'll keep it on the first page of the promoted listing. Nice. That's good stuff. Sorry. Sorry for coughing so much. If you're, okay. if you're watching on YouTube or, or listening and you can hear me occasionally do the uh, Dracula cough. Or, the dabbing? Yeah, the dab cough. <laughs> the dab cough. Um, yeah, man, I'm 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 feeling a little under the weather today, so okay. sorry about that. It's all good. I'll try not to breathe on you too much. It's all right. I'm I'm good. I'm good. So anyway, I appreciate what eBay did. And then after that, they had these roundtable discussions. One was like shipping, one was about hard goods, one was about clothing, one was about managed payments. And 
it was just great. And I got to connect with so many resellers. So props to eBay. They did a good job on this one. It's good stuff. I'm excited for eBay Open. That's what I mean. Like, if this was good, how awesome will eBay Open be? So... Anyways, it's gonna be legit. And uh, Doug at eBay was was pretty awesome. So Doug at eBay does a a podcast, and so you know maybe down the future we'll be doing some stuff with eBay. It'd be pretty awesome. Collab, yeah, collab. It'd be great. So definitely enjoyed. I enjoyed my time. So sorry, Mike. We'll make sure that next time we're both there. Yep. Yeah. Hey, at least people were asking though. Like, hey, where's Mike? Is it Mike? And I was like, oh, Mike at school tomorrow. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. All those right. of us that those of us that have other jobs. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, hey, if we did a San Diego <laughs> one, it's guaranteed we're both there. All right. That's right. Hey, so did you hear about Amazon One Day Prime? One Day Prime. One Day Prime. Like that's the next step. So, so instead of like the two day Prime, is it is it a uh, certain items only? Is it extra fee? No, it's, tell me it's, about this. It's everything. Everything. So they just they just announced that that's that is the next step that they're going in. So they're trying to do. One day prime, and in some locations, they're trying to do one, same day delivery, which is crazy, but it's even happening now. So for Mother's Day, I bought my mom an air fryer and I clicked on the two day shipping. And then it says, Oh, unfortunately, we're going to have to update the shipping. I'm like, Why? Well, it needs to get there. Oh, yeah, we're going to deliver it tomorrow for you. Nice. And I'm like, What? So, so th- I think this is a big deal. This is, well, it's obviously a big deal, and we know this, but. So Walmart says we're going to do the same thing. So Amazon, I, I don't know how much money. I want to see, like, they've bought, like, I don't know how many airplanes. Like, they're going to make this happen. So it's going to be the standard. Like, it's going to be the thing. So they're buying planes. And have you seen, like, they're offering, like, people, like, $10,000 to start an Amazon, like, driving, like, a van business, too? Man, that seems like it'd be a cool job. I don't know, dude. It it seems like super intense. Yeah, but like, I just think about how many podcasts I can listen to, like while I'm driving. Yeah, but I mean, like, I could I could go through and listen to 49 episodes of Pure Russell podcast while I'm driving. (laughs) It'd be great. But Amazon, like, they don't play games. Like, they want packages delivered. Yeah, but their drivers already are the worst. Oh, okay. We have listeners that are drivers. No, that's fine. Who have told us, like, Prime Day, they told me, I don't know if you saw one of the comments, somebody had commented, like, Prime Day is, like, the worst, because they have to work so hard that day. No, I'm sure there's a lot of them that are great, but, like, in my area, like, if it comes UPS, I know I'm going to get it on time. If it comes uh, FedEx or USPS, most of the time I'm going to get it. When it's, like, the Prime, maybe I'm just a little bit, like, upset because it always comes late like if, if it's ups really? i'm gonna get it in the morning if it's prime i always get it around nine o'clock at night and a lot of times it's like it's supposed to be delivered and it doesn't end up making my house must be like the last route for a lot of them and then it ends up going back and then getting shipped the next day really that's happened to me like six times wow i get myself on time all the time and even early yeah. and never I, never if closer, it's closer you're like almost in san diego yeah like i'm in san diego county but i'm on like the outskirts Interesting. Huh. Anyways, what does this mean for us as resellers? Number one, I, I'll i keep saying this. Like, as long as you can find a way to make Amazon happen, I think you need to. Even if it's just, even just books. Because what's, what's going to happen is Amazon just, I feel that Amazon keeps upping the game. And Amazon wants to be, like, the sole place that people pay from. Right. So even though they're very customer focused, they're I don't think they're like I think eBay is very much more seller friendly, but Amazon wants you to make sales. And we talked about that about third party being like 58% of their sales. The other part is if you're doing eBay and you don't have and again, everybody has their own kind of work schedule they're dealing with. What what do you have for your shipping handling? You have like a, a day, two days? I just moved it to uh one one business day. Okay. Um so that I can get like the like seal or whatever uh, on the, the top rated seller. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's worth it to be honest. Well, you get discounts too. Do you? You get discounts to final value fees. Okay, yeah. It's just it's tough because a lot of times if stuff sells like in the middle mm-hmm. of the night, like say it sells at like ten thirty, then the next day I'll pack it, I'll scan it, and then like the following day I'll take it to the UPS store. Right. Okay. So like okay. 
but now because it's next business day, it's got to be scanned by the the service provider yep. the next day. So like, because I work, I have to wake up early in the morning, pack it, and then find a time to get it to like UPS or USPS before they close. Now, do you have, now do you drop it into the bin thing? Do you have one of those post offices that have the bin? No, ours is broken. I, I, for the most part, go to just drop off everything at the UPS store because so many of so many of the items that we do are UPS. Okay, so we okay. just take the USPS stuff there too, ah, which we saw in our comments on last video um, that some some people said that the owners do not like that. The owners I know like it. So um, it, it, it just depends. Guess, Maybe it depends on it depends on the store. Yeah. But what I what I'm saying is like I really believe like on eBay to have that competitive edge edge. Like if you're not doing one day or same day handling, like this is the way to do it because it's unfortunately buyers are just going to be expecting things faster. Yeah. That's the downside to this is upside is if you're doing Amazon, maybe it pulls in more of a crowd, but also they just continue to set expectations unrealistically high. Yeah, I agree. I mean, for me, it's, you know, if full time, it's a little easier, but I, I agree. It's hard because I have my cutoff time. Uh, 1 p.m. I had it at 1 p.m. And like, if you buy before 1 p.m., I will ship it out that day. Oh man, it got rough. So I changed it to 9 a.m. because it, it just, it was brutal, but I get it. Like things come up and having to pack and having to get it to the post office and having it scanned. But, uh, you know, just be aware. Like if, if you want those eBay, especially in the summer slowdown, you want those eBay sales to trigger. Like I would say definitely change your handling time. So good old day. Good old Amazon. And Prime Day is coming. June 27 is the last day to get your inventory in. Yeah. Prime Day is a big deal. I know, like, I hear that from resellers, but every time I go on to, like, buy stuff, I'm like, all right, there's going to be great sales. I never find, like... No, no, you're right. I get it. No, there are. There's, like, the lightning deals, but I I, I can't tell you... I feel like, like the light, there's lightning deals every day, though. That's true. That is true. I, for they my, like hype up this thing that's like the same as it always is. But I love the hype because so for me, I can only speak on my experience and like two or three other resellers that I know personally. But Prime Day sales are crazy. I, I can't explain. Like, why would somebody buy more on that day? Like, what if they already have Prime membership? Like, what's the big deal? Yeah. I, well, I think it's it's the hype, right? It's this idea of there's these few like really good sales. I'm putting that stuff in my car. I might as well, oh, there's this other thing. And then they just go crazy buying because buying is addicting, you know, like yeah. once you start buying stuff, you go crazy. And then, but I've, I've done what well, I've, so prime day is a big deal for me because it helps kind of soften the blow of any summer slowdown. So I'll make enough on prime day that it'll cover whatever I lost in June and July. So it's a, it's a big deal. So I, but I, you know, what I wanted to reiterate is I know Amazon, we've talked about it and, and Amazon, if you haven't done it, can be overwhelming. There are a lot of hoops to jump. Sometimes <laughs> there's a lot of injustice that happens with Amazon. But if, if now Amazon is doing even more to ensure that they are innovative and competitive, <coughs> like the longer you wait, the more you're going to miss out on Amazon. Because there's people that say, I wish I started to, I wish I started doing FBA hardcore like back in 2014. No, so when when are you going to go teach me how to do it? I t- I'm waiting for you. I'm ready to go. It school's out. It's time almost, for us. Almost. Almost. It's time for us to make a run and then see what, I but books, 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 books. I will tell you, do you still have your scanner? I do. I I no longer have a subscription to uh the provide the service provider thing I was using, but I do have the scanner. So So there you go. We'll go do some, we'll do some book sales or something. No, books seem terrible. No, it's not. It's not. I'm telling you, those of you that sell books, let them know below. Like books, I think books are legit. Like if I. When was the last time you went into a thrift store to scan books? No, but I'm, but there's other places to get books. We'll talk off air. All right. But there's, there's book sales, there's closeouts, there's, there's even local. I mean, there's, there's ways to source books. Yeah. I will tell you in San Diego, thrift stores are terrible with books. Yeah, and then the other thing too is I don't understand how people are making money. Like you have to only be selling books that sell for a lot, right? And I just don't find that many of them. Like most of the books are just like the cheap, you know, like they're novels and things like that. Like you don't find very many. No, it has to be. It pretty much has to be nonfiction for the most part. But they're they're out there. I believe it. I just have to. Is it worth my time doing that over RA? It all depends on your capital. 
I mean, the thing about books, sometimes books sell, take longer to sell. And again, I'm not an expert bookseller at all. So our friends, Latin Pickers, who we know, I'm sure they could educate you on this. But, you know, RA, it's velocity. Books, there can be velocity depending on, you know, the ranking of the books. But I started with books and I really love books. I kind of stepped away from books because I I am just not a fan of just scanning all day. That's just, you know. And not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just it's not my thing. That's all. Kind of like I, I love eBay. Like if I could do eBay for everything, I would just do eBay all day. Because it's fun. Going to garage sales, finding stuff, listing it when it sells. Like that's fun. Being robotic and scanning things in stores. It's it's fun sometimes. Not always. Q4 is nice though. Okay. We're almost there. So I want to talk about, anyways, Prime Day coming. June 27, get your inventory in. Prepare yourself. Get ready. Prime day is coming. There you go. All right. The store that shall not be named is selling mystery boxes. Wah, wah. Okay. <laughs> but the reason I'm saying this is I think this is important. I think this you need to be aware. This is why. I always feel like I here's what, what's happening. This is our view. I guess that, that's what a podcast is. Isn't it, it? It's all our... Everything we say, for the most part, is just our opinion. So <laughs> it's true. It's true. Thanks for listening to our opinion, yeah. and, and, and you know, for validating. It's it. It's just an opinion. Like, there you go. Okay. You know. But the the so the story that actually really named is uh, it's called Goodwill Blue Box. So you can like, unbelievable. <laughs> Why is it? Because you can't say Goodwill Blue Box. You oh. have to say the store that shall not be named. Oh, sorry. Okay. Blue Box. The store that shall not be named Blue Box. This is gonna get obnoxious. And so. You buy, you buy, I think the boxes are like about 20 bucks a piece. If you buy like two, you get like free shipping or something. And uh, there's been some unboxing videos. So you could YouTube, you can Google that and see some of those unboxing videos. Let's do one. Let's unbox. Let's what? unbox live on Instagram. On Instagram? Okay. And we'll, let's do both Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. Okay. We'll do it. All right. Fine. After this, we'll put in an order. Now, they are sold out right now, but we'll put it in, we'll put it in an order. But here, here's what I want to say about that. So obviously Goodwill has a problem of having overwhelming inventory, right? Because, because their prices are too high and they can't sell anything. Possibly. I don't, I don't know enough. I know the prices are too high. That's for sure. The other part is I think they understand that like people like used clothing and they, and there's the new thing now is like, you want to be surprised about what you're going to wear. So, like, do you give them your size when you send them the mystery? Yeah, you give them sizes, yeah. You tell them the size that you're ordering, and they'll deliver it to you. So, you in men's or women's? Hmm. I don't know about that. What do you mean you don't know about that? I'm totally cool with going to thrift stores and buying clothes from thrift stores, but I feel like the amount of times I see, like, a clothing item that I'm like, yes, I would wear this, is so few and far between. I that agree. the idea of them picking and throwing in a box like this is his size, so like this is just unbelievable. Okay. But maybe they're like loading it with their better stuff. Well, okay, so that's where I have the issue is with any mystery box, I truly, as much as I believe that people are good to a certain point, I believe people aren't good. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna take the stuff that's <laughs> valuable out first. And so, you know, okay, so right now it's sold out, right? So we just looked at men's apparel. It is sold out. We cannot buy any men's apparel right now. But can we get like hard goods or trinkets? No, no, it's, it's just clothing. But you can, I think it's, a, I think it's on a subscription basis. So the store now. Subscription sh- too. Every month you get a box of used clothing that may or may not be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but okay. But it's another avenue to source. But here's what I'll say about this. The clothing market. So people always say clothing is dead. Right? Have you heard that? No. Okay. So. Uh, but I take your, I take your okay, word so for I've it. Been, you know, in the reselling community, like the ongoing thing last few months is that clothing is dead. Every, I'm looking here. Everything is sold out in the store that that shall be named. Maybe we Blue need box. to do mystery boxes. We'll just put like all of our inventory that doesn't sell in a box and we'll say, hey, do you guys want to buy our overflow it's all, inventory? It's all vintage clothing. <laughs> vintage items. And then we'll define, what we, we'll say Pure Hustle Podcast vintage, five years or less. I'm joking. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> okay. So clothing. Okay. 
I truly believe that, yes, clothing is good. I make a lot of, Mike, you make a lot of money on clothing? I do okay. It's kind of like bread and butter. Okay. You know. Bread and butter. Five, ten dollars an item. But I think that's going to get worse. And this is why. The more that's being donated, the overwhelming amount, <coughs> and now seeing Goodwill, and Goodwill, you know, I think it, oh, Goodwill, I'm sorry, the store that shall not be named, doing this is evidence to me that there is a ridiculous amount of non-branded clothing or clothing that won't resell for good money. And if you buy that clothing, and I'm talking about certain brands that don't sell for much, that the market's going to get flooded and you will definitely be in sweatshop mode with these, these items. So even with your palettes, like, right, you would say, some, you know, some of it was good and some of it wasn't so good. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely the thing with the boxes that we bought, like the the Macy's boxes. In each box, there's like four or five items that will sell for quite a bit. Um, most of the items, though, you know, you're only making like five to seven dollars each. Okay. When they sell, and it's slow, right? They trickle in like every couple of weeks. There's another sell. So, in the long run, if if half the box sells, like we've made a profit, and so then we still have you know, sweatshop clothing that'll eventually sell over time. But, you know, it adds up. But that's, but that's but not the model I want to do forever, for sure. But I think that's, that's going to get worse. Like, I, I think there's so much out there that you definitely, when you're sourcing for clothing, you're going to have to be even more selective. So, for instance, there's some Hawaiian shirts right now that I will not pick up. Brands that I would pick up two or three years ago, I won't even touch because there's so Do you want to name them? There. Uh Yeah. Uh, so I won't pick up, I used to pick up, uh, I think it's Hilo Hattie, or Hilo Hattie or something. Mm-hmm. I won't touch it. Like I used to be able to sell them for like 30 to 40 bucks. I I'll be surprised if you can get 20, 10 or 20, unless it's like a vintage. Mm. Uh, there's also, um, go barefoot, I think was one of them or barefoot paradise. One of those, those I used to be able to sell for like 20 to 30. I won't touch it now. Do you think it's just a, a matter of the market is in a low? Cause I feel like you hear that with certain brands too. Like, Oh, those shoes used to sell a few years ago and then they stopped selling and now they're selling again, right? Like agreed, but like for Rain Spooner, like Rain Spooner is still a solid sale. Like I, I still and it's getting even rarer now. But yeah, we, I almost never find those. Yeah, you never see them. And and you don't and I I will tell you, I don't even see them on like Goodwill sites or any any of the other places that, you know, I mean the store that shall not be named site. Like I just don't see it because I think it's becoming rare. Even though there's a lot out there, even though our one of our, you know what, we need to catch up on that hustle of the week. Do you remember Simon from San Francisco? He he bought a bunch of rain spooner. Oh we'll yeah. Store closed. I wonder yeah. how those are. Oh, we'll, we'll get back to you guys in a couple of weeks on that one. So, anyways, just be careful when you source because clothing. There's a lot of money, but you have to. I think gone are the days where you could order a mystery box and you're like, hey, I'm gonna make a lot of money on this mystery box. But if you're willing to make one or two or three or four or maybe even five bucks per item. Hey, maybe the boxes are worth it to you. But for me, the store that shall not be named, I think they ha- they're having a problem with a lot of inventory. That's just my guess. So, All right. I want to sh- talk about this. Do you know what the un- unpaid item assistant is on eBay? Uh, I don't know. And if, if you don't remember from like a couple episodes ago, I still have not had any unpaid item cases are for you like serious? months. My wife even, she listened to the episode. And she's like, oh, yeah. I was listening to you guys and I was like, yeah, we haven't had any of those. Like, I totally forgot about unpaid oh, items. I get them all the time. It's bizarre. I haven't, like, just none. Like, everybody pays, like, almost immediately. There's a few people, it's like, the next day we send them a reminder, and they always pay. But when I first started, I had, like, I'd say, like, every 10th item was unpaid. Really? Yeah. I have this pair of Reebok pumps. Like, they sell for, like, over $100 consistently unpaid item every single time somebody buys it. Every single time. So, and what I don't, and what I find maybe out, you're getting trolled, maybe, but what I no, it's very possible. So if you're listening, you're trolling, stop. But what I find is sometimes people will buy stuff on Friday and not pay me till not pay till Sunday. Oh yeah. You're, you get that? Yeah. Well, or, or just waiting till payday in general. Right. You know? Oh, it just, I, to me, that's one of the things that I wish eBay would fix. Like just, just take it out of the account. Just do it. Just do it. Cause then people will be more careful. You won't have a as many canceled transactions. And I truly believe you won't have as many returns because people are going to be, you know, probably a lot more careful about pulling the trigger, knowing that money is going to be coming out right away. Yeah. I think instant payment is, should be a 
it should just be guaranteed, right? Like that's how you buy things any other site. Like it's not layaway, you know? <laughs> but but I get those layaway questions all the time. Like, hey, is it okay if I buy this now and pay you in two weeks? Well, and I've had the opposite. I had I had the other day a person sent us an offer, we counter offered, and they came back like between the counter offer and they said, But I'll pay immediately. And it was about what we wanted to take. So like, all right, we'll take the offer. They didn't pay that day. And then the next day we sent a reminder. And then like the end of the day, they they responded back. Oh, sorry, I'll pay right now. Uh, I didn't get your acceptance. Okay. What? What What are you talking about? Oh, I don't. I I get that. Like we would have accepted the offer anyways, but like part of your, your, your deal with your offer was I'll pay immediately. And then you didn't like, just don't say it. Just send the offer. But I wish you could just up it to full price and go, I guess you have to pay full price. Now. Yeah. You didn't pay immediately. I accepted your offer. You know, now you got to go back to mine. So unpaid. Uh, so eBay's unpaid uh, item assistant. Okay. So it's really easy to set up. I shared this on Instagram. If you're brand new, you, you may not know about this. Those of you have been reselling for an, a long time, you know about this. If you go to your preferences on your eBay account, and you scroll down uh, to unpaid items, you can turn it on. You can set it up that after two days or after four days or after I forget how many days, it will automatically start contacting that buyer. And then eventually if that buyer doesn't pay, so I have it on two days. So by the end of two days, it'll open a case. And then the person you have to respond. If they don't respond, eBay will close the case and they'll relist the item for me. So it's just one less thing, one less step to worry about. That's nice. But since you don't get unpaid items, I guess it's something you don't have to worry yeah, about. Yeah, I mean right? that that's for that's for you people that get the unpaid <laughs> items. You know, I'm 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 above that. Nice. Yeah, okay. right. I'm gonna have so many unpaid items coming up. I'm just I should just keep my mouth shut. All right, hey, have you seen the new seller uh hub and app updates? No, I'm almost never on that thing. I, I, I use my uh my phone almost exclusively. But have you seen the send offer on phone? Do you have that option? Um I don't know. I haven't checked. My wife sends offers all the time and she gets like, she, she says probably if she sends offers on 10 things, like guaranteed one of them selling. Like she sent, she's like the offer queen and it's working. And the other thing that she, she likes about sending offers is people will stop watching. So she's, oh, really? yeah. So not only is, not only are we getting extra sales off of the the offer, but people who are watching that aren't really interested in buying end up dropping off because they're tired of getting offers. So it kind of gives huh. us a better idea of like, is this a hot item or not? Or if it's one of our listeners watching. Yeah, if it's, just, if it's just, yeah. <laughs> Which I do. I have an obnoxious amount of watchers on some stuff. And I'm like, I know either it's competition or it's somebody that's on IG story and goes, hey, I wonder if Orlando is, is telling the truth of whether this will sell for that amount or it's a buyer. You don't know. Remember, like, I don't know if we ever announced it. Remember that one item that you bought from a, a really uh, celebrity person and that you were trying to sell? Oh, yeah. Any any word on that? No, ever sell? no, no. It, but we can no, we can, we can name it. Okay, I, mean, I didn't. Because Gary V actually dropped a new trash talk episode today. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. There's another one out there. So that's good for us because Mug life. So I, I have one of the items that I picked up that he bought on his garage sale route that I have listed for a high amount, just seeing if his name will sell the item. Yeah. And I have watchers on it, but no, I really I don't even think I have watchers anymore. I think people got tired of watching it. Because it didn't sell. But who knows? So if you want a huge lot of <coughs> Matchbox and I think Hot Wheel cars that Gary Vee picked up at a garage sale. So if you're like Orlando you. and you you uh, are very fond of Gary Vee, then you, <laughs> you can take my boy that you time. can you can you can hold something in your hands that he purchased himself, and that'd be kind of cool. Like I mean. I get- because no. I just want I just wanted to see what would happen. Or maybe we can turn it into one of those things, like you know, the whole guy started with a paperclip and ended up getting a house. So you buy these these cars for an extremely expensive amount, but then you can sell them and say sold by Gary V and Pure Hustle Podcast. There you and go. then the next person will buy that, and like and it'll just keep growing. Nice, nice. Hey, but he was doing mug life again. So, hey, if you want to catch our Mug Life YouTube video and learn how to pack a mug, if you're new and you came over here because of Trash Talk, there you go. Yeah, that that's a, that's an intense video. I, you got to watch the end. I just love that video. I, I it, took so, it took so much time to put together, but it was a lot of fun. All right. So, anyways, eBay, it's kind of nice. So, if you go to eBay right now, I don't know if you got the same thing, but I'm able to, like, to filter everything out to just send offers. Like I got all these different options or it actually tells me like my, what my ad rate is on all my promoted listings 
or it allows me to change the price and things. There's a lot of good stuff on there. And so check your solar hub. So, so right now I have 196 items that are eligible for send offer. Well, you got it. See, you got the send offer thing down there. Did I? You see it? Oh, no, you don't. Yeah, you do right there. Oh yeah. I've had that for a little while. Yeah. Some people haven't, some people don't even have it yet. Huh? Isn't that crazy? Maybe, maybe uh, delete your, your, your eBay app and then reload it. Yeah. That might, I think that might, I had somebody had to do that and that helped. So anyways, but I, I do, I, I t- I'm telling you, I think eBay is definitely moving in the right direction as far as like just trying to be competitive. And I'm looking at my ad rates at some of these and I have some pretty high ad rates. But it helps me sell things. So anyways, all right, moving on. There's a little low right there in the podcast. Oh, and but I did get an offer. Oh, yeah, here's another brand that I don't pick up as much Hawaiian shirts. And, I'm about and it to just sell. sold. Yeah, it's about to sell. Um, RJC Hawaiian <laughs> shirts. So those used to be good money for me, uh, you know, because they have a certain look. I won't sell them now unless there's something unique. And I want to talk about that. If you're picking up clothing, this is what I missed. If you're picking up clothing, I would strongly suggest you only pick up clothing that you can have good keywords for. Right. So if there's a Ralph Lauren like sweater, unless it's like a purple label or black label or something that's worth a lot of money, like if it's just a red sweater, like how are you going to label? How are you going to keyword that? Like Ralph Lauren, polo, red sweater, long sleeve, like the material. But if it has like a, a bear golfing on it, you could put, you know, polo, bear, golf golfing like you know you can put different keywords so same with hawaiian shirts like i'm a big fan of don't just pick up every hawaiian shirt you see pick up hawaiian shirts that you could put good keywords for yeah i just picked up one uh with like santa all over it oh nice yeah but you could you could put santa you could put claws yep. you could put xmas you could put holiday you could put tree you could put like i don't know about tree but you could put presents you put gifts you could put i mean there's so many keywords. So when people are looking for that shirt, those keywords could, you know, bring that shirt up on the research. I just imagine that like when Orlando's looking at items, he sees things in like keywords. Like I do. Just adjectives. I really do. This is like, cause I, I notice like when I walk around now, like, and I have got my son with me, I'm always like, look at the red car. Oh, look, it's a blue ball. Right. I feel like that's what you think <laughs> when you're looking at stuff. You're like, you're just listing like as many adjectives as you can possibly no, or noun keywords, right? Like I'm just being real. When I, when I look at stuff, I like, think ding, 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 keywords, if there's keywords that will, I know will sell this shirt, I, I will pick it up. So for instance, hashtag keyword. Well, I've talked about those Hawaiian shirts like Corvette or VW stuff or anything that has vehicles. Like there's wood so, buttons, right? Isn't that a thing? Well, kind of, you could put like coconut buttons. You could put that on there. But I'm talking about like, so for instance, Volkswagen, there's a huge following. So I've sold stuff that isn't a name brand, but I'll put Volkswagen, I'll put Superbus, I'll put VW. Or like that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That wasn't a name brand, right? It was no, just... it wasn't a name brand, but it sold for like 40 something bucks. And that's right. That's from our one of our videos. Yeah. And I put, you know, Ninja <coughs> Turtles, TMNT. I put some of the turtle names. I put... Nickelodeon. I think I put Nickelodeon. It, yeah, it was Nickelodeon. I put some. Of, so anyway, think keywords. Okay, so that that's our topic. It's time for some hustles of hustle of the, the week. week. Yeah. All right. You want to share our this first one? Hustle of the week is where we take. I thought you were gonna go the most. Sponsored by. <laughs> it's brought to you by the store that shall not be named. No, um, it's not. But. Maybe it is. So um, our first hustle of the week is uh, from John. His Instagram handle is at Retro Ducks, which is pretty sweet name. Um, retro underscore Ducks. Retro underscore Ducks. Uh, so he's a box truck driver for a thrift shop. And as a driver, he has the ability to uh, occasionally like look through items and like get, buy items at the price and then um, sell them personally. So I've always thought that'd be kind of cool as a as a employee somewhere if you got first dibs on items yeah. as they came in, right? I had to ask him. I'm like, do you really have the option? And he goes, yeah, if it's worth it, I can pick it up. Nice. That is nice. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So he... Uh, he sees this Department 56 box and decides uh, to pick it up and list it. And it was a Department 56 high heel shoes Christmas cake stand. Uh, and he was able to list it for 199 with free shipping. Guys, Christmas sells all the time. I've sold Christmas stuff like last month 
It's bizarre, right? No, it, it it's year round. Like you're, and this one, it's a cake stand. Yeah, it's not like an ornament or like a village. It's a cake stand. And I think it's one of those things too. I feel like I feel like Christmas is a good one because those kinds of decorations come out once a year. People realize, or they break it, and as they're packing it, they're like, "I need to get a new one." And then at some point, as they're like going through cleaning the house, maybe spring cleaning, they're like, oh, yeah, I need to buy that thing so I have it for next year. Mm -hmm. eBay is where you go to like pick up the exact version of something that you had and broke, right? So so that kind of stuff, those kinds of of decorations, if it's the right brand, Apartment 56 is a great example, do it. I picked up an ornament the other day at a thrift store that was uh, like super fancy in this like velvet lined box. And so I'm excited to sell that. Nice. Oh, nice hustle there, uh, Retro underscore Ducks. Thank yeah, you, John. Yeah. All right, so this is a, a repeat hustle of the week. So first edition collectibles, right? I, I think it was back in the day. I, I want to say I was looking back. It was like November or something. I had a nice hustle of the week, but I like this one. So uh, first, edition, uh, first edition collectibles up in Canada and showed up at a small thrift shop. I noticed that they were unloading boxes. Remember we talked about like waiting outside of the store that shall not be named and getting donations, which is against the law, by the way. But <laughs> showed up and noticed and then found out that these boxes that were being turned in were from a game company that had shut down. And automatically I'm like, I'm reading this. I'm like, this is going to be good. So about 25 games at $2 a piece, 25 games. Sold one seal game for $110. I'm telling you, the deals are out there. I get people, I don't, I, I'm gonna go on a little rant. I get people all the time that say reselling is done. Like there's too much out there. YouTube's destroyed it. You know, the store that shall not be named, it knows what they're doing. I'm telling you, it's still something you can get into. Like there's so much out there. Okay, rant done. So $110. And then a rare development disc for a console for $350. I would pay $2 for each of these. And then one more, a promotional disc from the 90s for $850 and still has 22 games left. So it was some of this, you know, I, I can only share so much because, you know, obviously this deal was made and, <laughs> and you know, you don't want to share exactly everywhere and, and what you picked up. But these deals happen all the time. And I'm going to tell you, I am like, wow, 22 games left. So this is going to be, it may be hustle of the year. You should do a hustle of the year. Yeah. Pure hustle podcast, hustle of the year. Cause there's, Send in your hustles. I feel, I feel like, the, and, and again, we're all about the big hustles and the small hustles because they all matter because in the end, we're all learning from them. So we're all hustling. But wow, first edition collectibles, definitely legit hustle. Killed it. Killed it. Nice work. All right, wait till you hear this next one. Okay. So um, this one is Instagram handle uh, at the endless thrift. It's the.endless.thrift. Found an H18 digital camcorder at a local thrift store for $10. I'm not actually familiar with that brand, but I love looking at uh, camera equipment. So if I would have seen it, I would have looked it up for sure. It's Sony. Sony? Yeah, it's Sony. Um, So picks this up. Uh, sat in a death pile, but decided to uh, list it and sold it at $110 uh, in 30 minutes. $110, 30 minutes. Now, uh, um, at the endless house or at the endless thrift, uh, got some advice from at the college picker about we how to. We can't get away from Eric. Yeah. He's like on every podcast. So Eric, you're like, you're you're like a again. third man on the on the <laughs> podcast. Um, so so got gave advice to to rally His purposely. Rally. Rally. To purposely list it low to get the fast nickel to sell it quickly, which did in 30 minutes so that you got the more money so you can buy more stuff and move forward. So, um, yeah, at, and also gave advice on how to test it. So it's really important if you're not you know comfortable with, with you know, whatever it is you're buying, look up how to test it, reach out to people. Um, College Picker is a great guy to, to give you examples on how to test electronics. He's, he's like, like an, the reseller tech. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's very savvy with that kind of stuff. So, um, and purposely listing low, like sometimes that's the right move, right? So, uh, good job. Uh, keep going, keep growing, keep building. And, and the, what I liked is, so rally was very rally. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't think you can say that name any other way. <laughs> I don't want to put your names. It's, maybe it's Rayleigh. Maybe it is. <laughs> maybe. I'm, my apologies if we put your name, 
Again, maybe Mike just should do all the hustle of the week from this from from, from listeners. Or you guys could call in and save us the hassle. There you go. And that then, would and be then, awesome. And then we'll you'll say your name correctly. There you go. And here's the thing. Again, we have a lot of hustles of the week every week that gets sent to us. So we have to pick on some of these. So just, you know, be aware. We want you to be a contender. But if you call in, I think chances will be strong <laughs> that you'll be a hustle of the week. Yep. So, and then but, you can tell all your friends to check out the episode that you were on. There you go. But here, here's the thing. Like, I love selling stuff to other resellers if it's something I'm unsure about. Like, I don't mind, you know, losing 200 bucks if I'm going to make that quick $200 or whatever it is. So that was great. Like, that's great. I, I get that all the time. There's a deal right now. I wish I didn't pass up during Q4. I got an offer of, like, somebody wanted to buy 20 of one of my items I picked up from Toys R Us. They gave me a lower offer, and I thought I could sell it for more at Q4, and I, I never sold it. I should have just taken that offer. So, anyways, that's an awesome hustle of the week by Endless. The dot endless dot no the dot endless dot thrift. All right, rally or rally or rally <laughs> or rally. There, no, it's true, true. No, but Who nice knows? Hustle. hey, thank you all for sending us your hustle of the week. We always appreciate. It. We all learn from hustle of the week not only what to pick up, but also how to pick up things or how to list them or how to sell them. So. Great info. Thank you so much. Yeah, buddy. What about you? You got a, you got, what was your hustle this week? Okay. So I love my hustle of the week uh, because it, it's unexpected. So I shared this on IG and Saturday morning, two Saturdays ago, uh, it was raining, right? Hey, man, the rain doesn't stop in San Diego lately. No, it's been, it's been terrible. It's raining right now. It's yeah. Good. And it's going to rain for the next few days. So th- this morning I you know, I wasn't going to go garage selling because it was raining. And and it felt so nice, you know, when you sleep and it's like raining outside and you hear the rain and your bed's all cozy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I despise rain. Um, I don't mind the noise of rain despise when I'm inside. Rain. I despise rain. Um, I don't mind the, the sound of noise when you're inside because it's like a sound machine and I, I always have to sleep to, to noise. So I understand that. But most people who say they love the rain and I push them on it, the, the number one reason they say they like the rain is like, but you can be inside and like read a book or watch TV yep. and it's raining. 100%. So, so what you're saying is you like to be away from the thing that you like. like Correct. I sleep you, better I can when be, it rains. I could be inside the house when it's not raining. So like what you're saying is you like to be inside yeah, your house. I, you feel guilty when like, so, you know, being a full-time reseller, I can like take a nap if I want sometimes. So <laughs> after I drop off my kids at school, I'll go back home and I love taking a nap. Right. Cause you know, I'm up late working. I get up early, drop off my kids. I like going back. So, you know, I go back and I take a nap, but if it's super sunny, I'm like, oh, I don't think I can take a nap. But if it's raining, I'm like, get that sleep. Yeah, rain's the worst. It makes everything messy. Nobody likes to be sticky and wet. It just provides it the water me- that we need, though. Yeah, I always say I'm not a farmer, so okay. I don't need it. All right. Well, anyways, okay. So back to the story. I wake up in the morning, you know, my youngest woke me up and I was planning on going to this church, uh, church sale. And we, you know, it's funny cause a lot of you in the Midwest tell us that church sales are great. I don't find a lot of luck. Do you find luck at church sales here? Uh, I've done a couple that have been okay. Uh, but most have just been mediocre. Yeah. It's usually just like really stuff that people are trying to get rid of that have like no value. Yeah. So I decided to go. Now this was the second day and this church sale is actually literally like four blocks from my house. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. That church right there. So not four blocks. It's like a mile or two or three. I don't know. It's somewhere around there. Four blocks to three miles, man. I know, but you got to work on like no, here. <laughs> I started rethinking about the blocks. and I'm like, no, actually, it's not that close. I was thinking, anyways, don't mind me. It's like it's like three blocks or five kilometers away. I, I don't know. All right. Anyways, it's nearby. So I go, hey. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to this one. Who knows? And now the first day was full price. Second day was half off. So I'm like, hey, it's worth my time. So I show up, and I'm like, hey, you'll never know. And it, and it was raining, but they did a great job of tarping everything. And I go in there, and I, I'm going through, and I'm finding like stuff. Like I found like some vintage damn post boots. I found some sass shoes, which sell for good money now. I ha- I found uh, what else did I find? I just, I found some Hawaii. Oh, here's what's funny. So the Goodwill nearby had all these Hawaiian shirts, new with tags that they were selling for $8 a piece. 
the same person that donated those shirts donated to this church, and this church was selling them for five dollars a piece. So the store that not shall not be named, you know, was selling it for more than the church, which I guess that kind of makes sense in the rank of things. So, <laughs> anyways, so the church had all these new with tags, like Hawaiian shirts that were good brands. I think it was uh, Kala Kaleo or something. I I, forget, I butcher that name too. Now it is kind of an RJC brand, but it's it's a better brand. And some of them are these were like vintage shirts that had like B fifty two bombers and so on. So they're they're nice shirts. So picked up a few of those, and then, well, before I get that. I, I see this rack and I start going through the clothes really fast. And this lady gave me like the dirtiest look. Like you, like I could hear her thoughts if they were right going, you reseller, what are you doing? Cause I was just, and she kept looking at me. Yeah. The reseller hate. Oh, it, I, I felt it was like, it was on me. Like seriously, laser beams into my head. So anyways, I, so I went through there. There was nothing. I go to this rack and I see, one of my Holy Grail items. And I'm like, this this is not real. Like, is this this for reals? So there's a brand called Willis and Geiger. I think you've mentioned them before in a past episode, right? I did. So one of my nice, nicest sales I've had was a Willis and Geiger jacket that I picked up at the store that not, shall not be named a few years ago. And I was at the register and I saw a jacket and I just went and looked and I think I paid, I don't know, five to 10 bucks and I sold it for $300. That was at the store that shall not be named. Well, this time I see it on the rack. Now, remember, it's about 10 something in the morning, the second day of this church rummage sale. Everything's half price. I look, it's a Willis and Geiger green safari jacket, which right now I saw some comps on eBay. They're about, they're selling for about a hundred or so. I think I can get like 300 on it. I think, again, Orlando always believes on listing high. I could be wrong. But it was a half-day sale. So that jacket only sold for $2.50 that day. So it was one of those mornings where I was like, hey, I'm just going to go to this random church rummage sale. Now, did you, like, fight over the 50 cents? Were you like... No, 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 you can't haggle at the church rummage sale. No, but I mean, like, did you just give them three bucks for it? Or, like, did you, like, here's 50 cents? Well, no, they had everything. They put everything together. Okay. So I bought a bunch of stuff. Because I feel like you got to round up, like, at that point, like, when you... No, I, no, I, get, no, I get it. You're giving. No, I, I, I'm i not. Come on. I mean, I'm all about the hustle, but I'm not going to out-hustle a church that's trying to, you know, put together money for, like, a good thing. Yeah. So I think I paid $22 for everything in that haul. So I picked up a pair of boots, a damn post boots that I'm, tr- I'm probably going to sell for anywhere from 50 to 100, some sash shoes that are going to sell for about 50, uh, some other shoes. I think they're like floor shine. They're in great. They'll probably sell for like 20 to 30. Um, a starter shirt. Anyways, and then the Willis and Geiger. All because I decided not to stay cozy in my bed and get up and go to the church from it. You got to be out there, man. If you're sleeping, you're sleeping on money. You, you are. Napping. Like seriously. So anyways. Even when it's raining. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Willis and Geiger. Just joke. So if you don't know about Willis and Geiger, they're a brand that was discontinued, I believe in the nineties and some of their stuff goes for good money. It's weird. I think the market's a little bit different than it was two years ago, but there's still money to be made. So I'll give an update and when it sells, I'll share with it. I still haven't listed it. It's still in my inventory reserves. So that is my hustle of the week. Yeah. 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 All right. How about you, Mike? Um, there's a lot of items that I, I, I could, I feel like I potentially could talk about. One that's interesting is, um, Went to, when the day went to the seven thrift stores, uh, went to one and picked up a, uh, it's like a fax machine, phone, printer, thingamabob, right? Okay. New in box. Now the box is open. Are you telling me about that? Yes. Yeah, so the box is opened, but all of the items inside are still like packaged. They're all still sealed. It's all got the paper and the tape and stuff on it. So it's all new. And I was looking at this model and, and I paid up for it. I paid like $25 for this this phone, um, which I guess isn't really paying up, but you know, at a thrift store, sometimes you feel like you're paying $25 no, for something you're, you're paying up. I know. But so I, I buy which this is actually a good deal now, which is kind of sad. Yeah. It's sad. So I, I, I'm kind of paying up for this item and I'm, I'm looking it up and I'm seeing that like used phones of this and like different parts, like just pieces of it, like batteries and stuff like that are selling for decent. And then I find one that says 
new in box, box open, just like mine, right? Nice. Sold for $200 with $50 shipping. Awesome. Yeah. So, especially when it's the shipping part. And th- and that was sold, right? So one already sold for that. And there's none listed that are like this. So I'm thinking, all right, like I could at least get that. Maybe I'll list even higher since there's none listed. And then, so I tell you about it and you're like, hey, I just bought paper for that machine. Yeah. The film. Today. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Like, it, it is weird. I actually, I can give those to you if you want. Nah, it's fine. Yeah. It'll up your sale. Would it? I don't know. Just bundle it together. It, I don't think it will. But anyways, go ahead. But yeah, so I mean, it was a good sale, uh, especially because it was one of the last stores that I stopped at. And you know how you start to like the first couple stores, you've got this like this energy. And if you're finding stuff, that energy keeps going. But then you go to a couple stores and it's like maybe one or two items. And you start to like, you're starting to decide like, if I just go home now, like maybe I miss out on another item. All right, I'll go to the next store. And I went to one more store and bada bing, bada boom. Nice. There it is. And I filled up my cart at that that store. So yeah, I ended up, I ended up, I I went to two more, two more thrift stores after that one because I did so good there. Right. Does it motivate you? Kept me going. So, so that hustle kept me hustling is what I'm saying. All right. So we're going to have to update in a few weeks about how much those items sold for. Yeah, but. Or or two years, whenever they sell. Who knows, right? Who knows? So, all right. So what bolos are we going to share? Bolo? What's your bolo? Um, okay, so I was at um, a thrift store and a store that shall not be named. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, and I bought two bags of toys. And normally, this store, the specific store that I'm at, like doesn't do toys in like the the bags, like the clear bags, like lotted. Okay. Uh, but a couple of times they do. In fact, I I bought a, a big bag of Beyblades there one time for like $4 and sold it for like $60 on eBay, which is great. So I always look at toys occasionally to see if they have, and they had two bags with toys in them. And one of the bags was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, like plastic figures. And I'm like, all right, my son's still a little young for this, but this looks like good plastic. And I couldn't really see through the plastic. Yeah. There's like, Like it felt nice with, with toys. There's like plastic. And then there's like good plastic. Like the good plastics, the stuff that lasts a long time. Like it's solid. It's good. It's not chinsy. It's not going to break. It's like a toy that like, you know, it's going to be good for the next 10, 20 years. So this is like, I'm like, this looks like good plastic. Like I'll, I'll buy this, this, these toys. And if they sell, they sell. Otherwise, then, you know, they, my son can play with them. And then I get home and I look at the bottom of the feet and I see the brand and they're selling for like $10 per action figure. And there's like probably 15 or 20 in really? here. Yeah. Nice. And I paid, I think seven ninety nine for the bag. And then um, you you remind me of Thriftzilla, and on, on Instagram like he's a toy guy. Toys are good, man. And then I bought another toy. And here's the bolo. Sorry. So wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's not no. Uh, that was the lead up to that. Oh, so I'm like, you're gonna you're gonna tell me you're gonna light it up or whatever. Oh, I'm going to. But but the other bag that I bought were these things called magnetiles. Now. I thought we talked about those. Before. No, I talked. They, I talked about the tegu tiles. Oh, tegu tiles. Magna oh, tiles are different. Yeah, those are different. But I bought these ones for four ninety nine. So look up the brand Magna tiles. I haven't counted how many are in there, but I'm assuming it's at least one hundred twenty pieces. And the the ones with that many are going for like seventy five dollars plus on eBay. So Magna tiles are super colorful, kind of clear, magnetic, square kind of flat pieces that are square, triangle, um, rectangles, different. They kind of all collapse together because they're magnets. And if you see those at a garage sale or a thrift store, they're, they're, those, they're the kind of toys I feel like that toddlers and like slightly above toddlers okay. will play with. And then they're not interested in them anymore, but they're expensive, high quality toys. So okay. people are looking on eBay, right? Because rather than buying them new for $120 on Amazon, you can get them for $75 on eBay. Okay. So magnetiles, check it out. Be on the lookout. Interesting. I never really would. I, 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 those were one of the items that I probably would have just seen and go, eh, and just kept walking. Now you know. Look them up. Magnetiles. Nice. Okay. I, I, you know what I love about our bolos? They're always so different. Never know. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, so what are you looking forward to? What are you eating into your bolo? Oh, I, oh, did I not share my bolo yet? What's your okay. bolo? My bolo is translators. All right. Thanks for your bolo. So, <laughs> no, no. But what I mean is like those electronic, like whether it's Franklin or Merriam-Webster or mm. whatever it is, look those up. So I don't know. I don't know if you caught my IG story about the garage sales this past Saturday. 
But my hustle that could have been a hustle of the week was I showed up at this garage sale and they had these two translators. And the only reason I'm sharing this is because it reminds me of this is something I haven't shared. So these translators, the guys like he thought, you know, is one of those, you know, like your guy that said, you can't sell those for more than 10 on eBay. Yeah. So this guy was like, I'll, I'll give him. I said, how much? He goes 15 each. But if you buy both, I'll sell them. Uh, no, he said, what did he say? He said 20 each. But if, if you buy both, I'll sell them for, to you for 15 each. And then I go, how about we do 20 for both? He goes, well, show me the money. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So I pulled out my 20 and I'm like, here you go. Well, these translators have a ranking in the 30s and on Amazon, used, by the way. And they each sell for $115. Right? Bala bala. So Bolo definitely translate. And I've had translators and for who a long- buys those now when you got a phone that does that? You know, you know what? When we taught, didn't we have a lot of international students that use those? That is true. Right? Yeah. But part of that, I think, was because they weren't allowed to use their phones. Now they just but use the, their phones. Oh, it's just true. So, <laughs> so the school so if you're, go, if so you're the, a, for the sake of our bolo, the school should go back to canceling yeah, cell phones. So, so if you're a student at a school that doesn't let you have your phone, then you can buy ancient technology that does the same thing less yes. effectively. But I don't, I don't know. a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know why there's a market, but I will tell you, I was selling translators three, four years ago for, you know, 50 to 80 to a hundred bucks. So if, and it depends, but you can pick them up at garage for $1, $3. These were nice. Like they had the leather case that came with them and everything, but definitely keep an eye for translators. You know, don't worry about taking out your phone and researching it. I mean, I, I did this in front of the guy and he was fine with it. Cause he was researching on his phone and maybe he researched or I don't know what it was, but he thought that he was selling it for good money. So. It's all good. So keep an eye out for translators. Yeah, yeah. So remember, and not all translators are the same. So what you looking forward to now, Mike? Oh, man, you're putting me on the spot. What am I looking forward to? Um, Obviously, still going forward with the fifth wheel stuff. We're going to be having our own garage sale coming up That's in the right. next couple of weeks. So uh, I'm not looking forward to um, running that. I think my wife might have um, like her, her parents come down and help run that so I can be out buying I'm going to be buying stuff from garage sales while she's selling stuff at a garage I sale. Think, I would think a garage sale, running a garage sale would be painful. Yeah, it sounds painful, but um, but I'll make sure she has help. If she doesn't have enough help, then I'll, I'll stay in and do it too. But um, but it's hard to to miss the opportunity to be outsourcing, you know? So it's going to be weird to think that like I'm, I'm my goal is to fill up my car with as much stuff as I can to bring home from garage sales or her goal is to sell as many things out of our house in a garage sale. And you can make double the money that day. It's going to be crazy. It is going to be crazy. And you'll have more inventory space. It's true. Well, <laughs> for very short term until we move. You know? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Well, nice. Okay. Yeah. What about you? What are you looking forward to? So I'm looking forward to listing hard goods. I have a lot of hard goods that I've not listed. And part of the reason I'm listing it now is because, you know, I, I want to test this out. So when, when, we, when we have our episode about, you know, how to, you know, counter or, you know, end or stop the summer slowdown. Like I want to be able to give, I want to be able to testify <laughs> about how hard goods still do well and, and how it's definitely something you should look at when listing, especially in the summer. So I'm going to list a bunch of hard goods and just see how it goes. Cause I've been listing a ton of clothing, a ton of shoes and you know, hard goods, you know, in between here and there, but I've been holding on to some of that. So it's time for me to list and I want to see how it goes. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I like it. Good stuff, man. So, hey, thank you all for listening. Hey, make sure to keep following us on Instagram, Pierce Podcast, and on YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe. Share our podcast. Thank you all for, you know, your support. We're going to be approaching a year here pretty soon. Getting there. Almost there. Almost there. Crazy. Episode 49, 52 will be a year. Well, almost. Because we released a couple on the... It's weird. Oh, it is weird. We had those... Those lost episodes, too. Yeah. So, anyways, hey, with all that being said, make sure to be real, be relevant, and be reselling. Peace. Peace.